We now know that Hamas is threatening to execute an Israeli civilian hostage every time that an airstrike hits Gaza civilians in their homes without warning.
Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. But though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. Once the Jewish people were stateless, once the Jewish people were defenseless, no longer. Hamas will understand that by attacking us, they've made a mistake of historic proportions. We will exact a price that will be remembered by them and Israel's other enemies for decades to come. The savage attacks that Hamas perpetrated against innocent Israelis are mind-boggling. Slaughtering families in their homes, massacring hundreds of young people at an outdoor festival, kidnapping scores of women, children, and elderly, even Holocaust survivors. Hamas terrorists bound, burned, and executed children. They are savages. Hamas is ISIS. And just as the forces of civilization united to defeat ISIS, the forces of civilization must support Israel in defeating Hamas. I want to thank President Biden for his unequivocal support. I want to thank leaders across the world who are standing with Israel today. I want to thank the people and Congress of the United States of America. In fighting Hamas, Israel is not only fighting for its own people, it is fighting for every country that stands against barbarism. Israel will win this war. And when Israel wins, the entire civilized world wins. But what is happening here? This is more than just Hamas. What do you suspect um, has gone on behind the scenes in the lead up to this horrific attack? Well, thanks for having me, Laura. Yeah, it's definitely the darkest day in Israel's history. I can truly tell you personally that I was personally appalled by the scale and scope of this. And uh, just for, for your audience to realize, um, uh, we woke up in the morning to the sound of sirens. We assumed it would be just yet another round of, of rocket launching and rocket barrages, and everything would go back to be the same as it was. But then we saw horrific videos, and I'm sorry for being to, for describing it to your viewers in such graphic terms, but children being tied up and executed in their own homes, and soldiers, soldiers' body being sabotaged. And we saw youngsters in nature parties simply ambushed and, and really a massacre and a spree and we saw these horror videos and we ask ourselves my goodness this has nothing to do with territorial dispute this solution or that solution we're dealing with barbaric isis type human animals here that have that have taken their inspiration from the nazi regime i suspect now the, the previous reporter was absolutely right in terms of, of numbers it was equivalent to maybe 10 times 9-11 uh, in, in terms of, uh, in relative terms of population. And so Israel is, is shocked, but it is also, you know, uh, preparing for war. And we saw the really, uh, the airstrikes pounding the, the, the Gaza uh, facilities of Hamas. We saw how uh, Hamas is, you know, um, uh, it's, it's beginning to regret perhaps. It's very audacious, uh, one bridge too far action. But we're also seeing the Iranian fingerprints, Laura, all over this, this uh, yes. step, oh, this and what does horrific that mean? massacre. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess you and many others would have suspected this anyway, but if you have confirmation, where, what does that actually mean? What is then the reaction of Benjamin Netanyahu and the US? 
Well, I think as for starters, we need to throw out the window all of our old concepts and our uh, and our conception that we can feed a hungry lion. Uh, we saw uh, we tried strategic containment with Hamas for years now. We know that Hamas has taken over the Gaza Strip in 2007, and ever since we've been trying the method of you know appeasement. And at worst, we saw these rounds of conflict where, let's be honest with ourselves, relatively sterile fighting with the Air Force carrying out most of the, the attacks. And uh, we, we saw, you know, rocket barrages, um, you know, mostly intercepted by the, the Iron Dome system. Yeah. And we kind of dealt with that. And now you see the level of barbarism right on your doorstep. And you realize this is this is a whole different ballgame. And I think right now Israel has all international credit it wants to take bold action in Gaza and to eradicate Hamas, really eradicate this terrorist group called Hamas. But also, I would expect the Israeli leadership and the US and the, really the moving statements of support from around the world, from Australia, yeah. from Europe, from all over the world, even the Middle East, to tackle the Iranian regime head on. That would mean uh, the Iranian regime has planned this carefully. This is just for you to realize, this is, they were, these Hamas terrorists were were trained and equipped and armed by Iran. This is um, yeah. this is nothing to do. But or just what with you're Gaza. talking about here? So. Let's be real about what you're talking about. Uh, if war is declared on Iran, this is a whole different ball game. Right, and so I'm I'm confident that the Israeli leadership and the U.S. leadership would be responsible enough to know what to do about it. And we're not pretending as if there is an easy solution to this. All I'm saying is that uh, our old conceptions needs to be, need to be thrown out the window in face of these barbaric human animals. That would mean that the Iranian regime can no longer be uh, tackled in a matter of polite negotiations. Uh, well, this is a regime that has been exporting the revolution, so-called, or really outsourcing terrorism, around, spreading terrorism around the Middle East. We see it with Hezbollah, with Hamas. Um, destabilizing the entire Middle East. We see the Iranian leader touting his achievement on Twitter, saying that the Zionist regime is dying, his words. And so uh, really there's no choice but to, to not to, uh, let's say our assumptions were not null and void, but they definitely merit reevaluation here. So Hamas must be crushed and destroyed, but we need to also to change our attitude toward Iran and the way it's carrying itself around the world. Or Issa Shah, thank you so much for your time. Just approaching 2 a.m. local time there in Jerusalem. May I, Please. May I just say, Laura, may I just say, Laura, just for to maybe end it with an optimistic tone. We've seen the, you know, the best of the Israeli spirit um, in motion. We've seen the spirit of, of, of people volunteering and packing, you know, food packages for soldiers and civilians, opening their homes for families from southern Israel. We saw, you know, over 100 percent, 150 percent of people uh, drafting for for uh, reserve service. And, and so this spirit will endure. And that's why I'm optimistic, because, you know, we got such great people and such great spirit. So uh, and we're in this war to win it. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. We needed a an uplifting uh, moment because there are not many over the last sure. few days. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Thank you, Laura.